What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, uh, yes, and we are continuing my series of looking at the best cards in every set of the game, and we are on to Cyber Dark Impact. For realsies this time. Yes, last video was the uh, dishonorable mentions for the set. Instead of just having one or two, I figured I wouldn't devote a whole list to all the bad cards in the set because there are some, there are some certainly bad ones. But uh, I'd like to end on a high note. So for part two, we are going to be looking at the best cards of the set. And I'd like to try to use this video to prove my hypothesis that the set's not as bad as everyone says it is. It's just that uh, it's always been bad as opposed to like the most of the other sets around this time, which have just aged horribly. So it just left a bad taste in people's mouths, but it's not any objectively worse than any of the other sets that came out in this era, because they're all they're all pretty crappy. But uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Just a short intro on this one. Alien Mars. Yep. As much as I like to make fun of aliens, this is actually one of the better cards in the set. A level three fire reptile, cause who cares? But we care about that effect though. The effect of effect monsters with A counters on them are negated except alien Mars. That's actually really, really solid. He is a walking skill drain for anything that has A counters on them. It's a little annoying that it doesn't discriminate between alien monsters and other non-alien monsters, so if you have any of your guys have A counters on them, they're gonna get their effects act as well, but uh, most A counters are manually placed. They're not automatic, if I'm not mistaken, so as long as you're not putting them on your own guys, you should be okay. Also, if he had a little more attack power, he'd be a little nicer, but uh, in modern days, you could go Moon Mirror Shield or something, he'll be alright. He's, uh, he's gonna be a little annoying for certain decks in order to play against. Overall, not a bad little card for aliens. Um, <sighs> it's a shame that it's a two-card combo that you need alien counters and on the field in order to get it to work, but if you do and your deck is functioning, this thing is gonna be a pretty solid little play into a larger board, because no effect is being activated. Cyber Shadow Gardener is number nine. Yep, Cyber, uh, Cyber, Cyber Darks uh, kind of managed to also get one on this list. So again, not all bad here. It's not technically a Cyber Dark, but it, it's close enough. This thing's just one of those trap monsters that summons itself as an effect monster when you flip up the trap card. Machine Earth level four, whose attack and defense are determined by what monster is attacking it. So if it is attacked, it gains the stats of what's attacking it, meaning that in attack mode, it's pretty much going to for sure suicide against whatever your opponent's attacking it with, meaning it's a pretty decent little wall. And in defense mode, your opponent, uh, they're gonna have a hard time beating over it. So this is just a nifty little thing. It uh, stalls for time and as an effect monster, if this is like old school Yu-Gi-Oh and you're trying to use this thing for like tribute fodder next turn or some hooli, the ability of making it hard to be killed by battle is certainly kind of useful. It's not the greatest card in the world, but it's certainly better than a lot of the other cards in the set. <laughs> there isn't much to say about it, it's a trap monster. Uh, yay! Here you go. Number eight's actually kind of neat. Ritual Forgone. Pay a thousand life points, special summon one ritual monster from your hand. The monster special summoned by this card cannot attack and it's destroyed during the end phase. The effect on this card probably seems familiar to people because it's pretty much a ritual version of instant fusion, which is a little funny. You'll see why later. However, where this thing differs from instant fusion is instant fusion is considered a proper fusion summon. Uh, this thing is, uh, from by its own wording, it seems to not be a proper ritual summon, meaning if that monster is killed during the end phase by this thing's uh, lingering effect or by a card effect or something else, uh, you can't summon that monster back with something like, uh, Fulfillment of Contract. Ooh, that's a deep cut. However, to cheese a ritual monster like relinquished out of your hand in order to use its effect to suck something up and then go into like, I don't know, Millennium Eyes or into Link Karibo or something after that is certainly an interesting little play that you can do in the fact that it destroys it during the end phase is not necessarily the end of the world. It'd be really nice if it was a proper ritual summon like Instant Fusion is a proper fusion summon. However, we can't have everything and um, this thing does just like Instant Fusion 
have very specific targets that it can actually be used on because not all monsters can be ritual uh, ritual summoned with this thing because uh, some ritual monsters specifically say they can only be ritual summoned by their ritual spell. So you gotta look at the monster. This thing can play most of the old school ones though, which it's cool. It's a cool card. I don't think many decks would play it, but it's certainly at least an interesting thing to have in our back catalog. Accumulated Fortune is number seven. This one's neat if you're a chain burn player. Activate is chain link four or higher. Uh, uh, you can't activate this if there's uh, more than one card in the chain of the same name. Draw two cards. It's, it's pot agreed with a really, really specific activation condition. Why is this card on the list and not like all the other needs to be a chain link cards like on the last list? Uh, because drawing two cards is an extremely powerful effect. Uh, simply having a bad restriction isn't enough to dethrone draw two cards, unless of course it's almost impossible to play. But in the right deck, this card does not fall into that category. With enough quick play spells and chainable traps, you can pretty much tailor your deck to just draw this thing at the end of a long activation of back row in order to refill some of your resources. Kind of like how you use your or card of demise to fill your back row once you've used all the crap that's already there. You won't run very many because it's going to be pretty bricky and you can really only activate at most two of these per chain because you can activate one and then you can activate another one after that immediately. I'm pretty sure that's how it's ruled because it's not till the second one is activated that the third one would see the fact that there's two of a very specific card. Whatever. Long story short, drawing two cards is good and in a chain burn deck it's not very hard to do, so accumulated fortune. Cool, Snipe Hunter. Snipe Hunter is a fun little card because it's got a really weird effect that sounds like it'd be bad on paper, but actually managed to see some interesting and quite extensive uh, competitive play simply because the odds are ever in your favor. Discard a card and target a card on the field, roll a dice, destroy that card unless the dice's results were one or six. This destroys one card on the field regardless of its face up, regardless of its face down, whether it is a spell trap or monster. Snipe Hunter, don't care. Which is actually probably why this card was such an effective piece of removal because you got a four out of six chance, two out of three, in order to actually pop the card, which is better than 50-50, so the, the odds are in your favor for this to function. And with all the times I don't roll a six when we're trying to figure out who goes first in the duel, I should have no problem. <laughs> sure, sacking a card is kind of lame, making the thing a one for one. However, however, discarding a useless card out of your hand or something that might want to be in the graveyard like a Mizuki in order to pop a problem card in the field is most of the time well worth the one for one exchange in card economy. Being a dark level four fiend isn't the worst thing. It'd be cooler if he was a three, but you know, we can't have everything. And at this point in time, being a level three dark fiend didn't really matter. And having a 1500 attack power body isn't the worst thing in the world. There are things like Fossil Dyna he can jam over, so he's not the weakest monster in battle either, meaning that his utility is pretty well-rounded. Nifty little tech card. Hey, the barrier statues are five. I wasn't sure which one to put in here. Um, I'm gonna do the wind one, because I like harpies, and you can summon this thing with the uh, Mist Valley field spells. This, that's cool. I like the barrier statues. Uh, they have their own deck where you can shove them all together into one deck, or if your deck has one attribute, you can just shove one of these into it, and if you can have a way of cheesing a monster out of your deck with something like uh, Ties of the Brethren, then you most certainly can have some fun times to be had with a barrier statue. What do they do? Every barrier statue of every element has uh, an attribute and a typing that is appropriate, like Wing Beast and Wind. And their effects are always, whatever attribute they are, neither player can special summon monsters except the attribute that they are. So uh, the Wind one says you can only special summon Wind monsters, the Fire one, you can only special summon Fire monsters, and so on. It's both players, which is really cool, which is why if you're playing this in something like Harpies, it doesn't matter because all you guys are wind and you just got to be playing this against a deck that has no wind guys and then you're the only one that gets a special summon. At a thousand, thousand attack and defense, they're all not the world's worst things to get over. However, if you have some mild protection with your back row, these things can be a problem for your opponent pretty quick. And if you have a way of cheesing it out of your deck, like I said, 
you can make a nifty little board. There is actually some really good cards in this set, and I think people forget about it. Vanity's Fiend. Yeah, Vanity's Fiend was in this set. This level 6 Dark Fiend with 2400 attack and 1200 defense has the following ability. Cannot be special summoned. Neither player can special summon monsters. So, unlike the barrier statues, which restrict everyone to special summoning one monsters of uh, one attribute, Vanity's Fiend says, no bueno, nobody can special summon nothing. In a deck like Burning Abyss, we can just... Special summon one of your Burning Abyss monsters and immediately sack them for this thing means that again going like game two against the right deck, this thing is a nifty side deck option and in certain anti-meta decks you might even main deck this puppy. He is a very oppressive monster and certain decks sometimes simply cannot out it because they use their monster effects special summon from the extra deck to get rid of problem monsters. So if a monster is preventing special summoning and is at 2400 attack, he might be just big enough for certain decks just have no natural out to. So that is a nifty free little win that you can get with something like Vanity's Fiend. Also, he's got like them Super Saiyan 4 furry arms. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just think that's kind of neat, I guess. Number three is Blackhorn of Heaven. Again, that's not that bad. Blackhorn of Heaven is basically Solemn Strike before Solemn Strike with Solemn Strike. When your opponent would special summon exactly one monster, negate that summon, and if you do, destroy it. This was a rotted. Um, originally, it was implied that you could kill more than one monster at a time, but uh, no, nah, it, it's it's been clarified that it only gets it's a one for one. However, it only also hits your inherent special summons from your extra deck, so you're not going to be doing anything against a ritual or fusion summon. Uh, unless it's a contact fusion, but that's a little special case. But mostly things like Synchro XC and Link monsters would not want to run into a Blackhorn of Heaven. Sure, it's been power crept by the Solemns, uh, or even D Barrier, just preventing special summoning at all. However, uh, if you're playing like a budget build or something, even though I don't think Solemn Strikes are that expensive anymore, or you're playing like, I don't know, a Counter Fairy deck, you just want to get more Counter Trap cards in your deck. Blackhorn of Heaven is certainly a solid little card and can be pretty annoying being that it is a counter trap card. It's hard to chain to. Here we go. This is why I thought that ritual card was interesting because it's also uh, Instant Fusion came out in the same set. Yes, basically the exact same card as that other one, but for fusion monsters. Instant Fusion is an instant cup of soup with the following effect. Pay a thousand light points and special summon one level five or lower fusion monster from your extra deck. Uh, it is considered a fusion summon, which is a nifty little clause. I am glad they stuck that on there. The monster can't attack and it's destroyed during the end phase. The utility of this card is just through the freaking roof. Most of the times people are using it in order to cheese out a fusion monster from their extra deck, which may or may not actually have much of an effect at all, but they do care about what the monster is, not what it does. Something like, I don't know, Panzer Dragon or that uh, Kaminari attack. I don't know. It's it's a it's a, a vanilla fusion, with a, but it's a thunder, and all people care about is that it's a thunder. But Insta Fusion is great for that crap. Do you need a dark level 4 dragon? The Dark Flare Dragon is a good is a good target. Do you need a level four Earth Warrior, uh, Shrimp Marinara Warrior is a good <laughs> option. Chicken Marsala Warrior. Basically, if you just need to cheese out a monster from your extra deck just to be a level whatever attributed whatever typed whatever, there's probably an instant fusion target for that. So that's always a nifty little option. Plus. Uh, your Panzer Dragon has dual ability because the fact that this thing kills a monster during the, the, the turn, the one that it summoned during the end phase, you can combo with uh, Panzer Dragon's actual ability to, when it dies by a card effect, to pop something. So, like, if your opponent has a Floodgate on board and it's, 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 it's really causing you nightmares, you could literally, it's the slowest removal ever, but worst case scenario, is to fusion Panzer Dragon, let it die during the end phase and get rid of a problem card. There, you got that kind of thing. Plus, we got it, we got Thousand Eyes Restrict back. You know, to three, finally, after all these years, he's been there for a little while now, but for a majority of the game, he has been banned. So it's really cool that we got him, because him and his brother Millennium Eyes are actually really solid targets for Instant Fusion, because uh, one is a proactive, one is a reactive response to your opponent's problem monsters. So 
that's also cool. Overall, Insta Fusion just has tons of stupid utility and it's gonna be a good card for pretty much the life of the game because as long as we need specific monsters to do things, Insta Fusion will be a easy way of doing that. In the middle of the video, I'm starting to feel pretty sleepy. My throat's getting scratchy. I think I'm coming down with a cold. I hate the winter! Why do I keep getting sick? Ah! It's gotta be the subway. It's gotta be the subway. You're, you're stuck on the ground with a bunch of people hacking and coughing. I think it's germ fest. Anyway, we got some honorable mentions this time around because uh, I didn't want to have any dishonorable mentions for a dishonorable mention list. That just seems cheesy. But for honorable mentions for a list of good cards, there was a couple really specific but yet nifty cards I didn't want to leave out. And these two cards are those cards. Vanity's Call. Vanity's Call is a counter trap card with the following effect. You can only activate this as chain link four or higher. Pay half your life points and negate all of the effects of every effect of every card that is all the previous chain links in the chain that this thing was activated in. And destroy them. So let's say your opponent plays BLS to the field and activates his ignition effect to banish a card. You chain, uh, he, let's say he targets, it only, he only does monsters, right? So let's say he targets your, your dynamite fighter and dynamite fighter's effect activates and chains to it. And then you activate uh, MST to target a back row, which is bad against True Draco, because you're gonna get an MFA, but whatever. Oh, you, uh, Cosmic Cyclone, how about that? That's a better, that's a better card to use against him. And then your opponent's like, aha, uh, uh, whatever, I'm still gonna get my search. And you're like, nah, man, uh, Vanity's Call. The, the, you would be negating two of your own cards and that'd be an awful play. I am sick. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but all but the, <laughs> But the uh, Dynamite Fighter, Cosmic Cyclone, and the and the and the BLS would all be negated and destroyed. So clearly, this card has much better utility against when your opponent chains a bunch of their own crap. Let's okay, fine. Here we go. Let's start over. Your opponent's playing Nurse Burn, and they flip all their gift cards at once. You're gonna be like, aha, gotcha. That makes a thousand times more sense. <laughs> Obviously, this is only an honorable mention because the thing is a little hard to activate. And to get it to activate, you gotta throw your own cards into the chain links, and that's traditionally probably a bad thing, unless they get like some sort of, when they're destroyed by card effect, they do something effect, which is, that's some cheese, that's some next level cheese. Mostly, it's, it's, it's very niche in its activation, but if you could get it off, uh, it would be a blowout, so that's, that's kinda cool. And the other honorable mention is Degenerate Circuit. Degenerate Circuit is a continuous spell that has a every standby phase pay 500 maintenance cost during yours, not, not your opponent's. It's also not optional, which is annoying, but whatever. Any monster cards that would be returned to the hand are banished instead, which means if you have a bouncy bounce deck with like Storming Mirror, Force of Grand Mole or some hooey, you can start banishing stuff and that's cool. But what the most interesting thing about Degenerate Circuit is that it is a natural floodgate against the deck Ultra Athletes. <laughs> Yes, as part of their inherent summoning condition, Ultra Athletes, for cost, must return one Ultra Athlete on the field to the hand in order to special summon themselves by their own inherent condition. However, because this thing is on the field, you cannot return a card to your hand without banishing it, so therefore you can't properly pay cost, so therefore you can't even attempt to summon your UAs. Are UAs good? No. no. But uh, what I think is just I'm using them as an example for is this is an excellent floodgate against a tier one deck that just doesn't exist yet. So as soon as we get a deck like UAs that has a bouncy, flippy, floopy thing for its mechanic, this would be a, an obviously a great floodgate against that deck. So uh, it's just another one to kind of keep in the back catalog because somewhere down the line it might actually be good. It just doesn't really have a purpose yet. But it might because it's just a good floodgate style card. So you know, keep it in mind, I guess. And before we get to number one, I just want to go do the Metamats thing, because there are sponsor car, sponsor, sp uh, blah. ah yes, if you want a custom cloth playmat, uh, as long as it's not something super obscene, they do have their limits, but they'll pretty much print anything you send them. You can go to Metamats website and you can upload your images, or you can go from one of their collections of ones that they've got, and you, they have some pretty cool ones there too. 
they're all really awesome. They're the only mats that I use. That's not just a shameless plug that literally I just can't stand the big giant mouse pad mats because they just don't feel right with your cards. And uh, a meta mat folded twice over is a nice cushy playing service. I really like it. And if you use the code TROLLTHEMETA, you can get like 10% off, which is cool because it helps me, it helps the channel, and it gets business over to meta mats. So it's a win-win for everybody. So that's a thing. And without further ado, number one. Number one is the only limited card in the set. Although I would say that between it and Instant Fusion, it's kind of a toss up which would be number one anyway, even if it wasn't limited, and that is Chain Strike. Ah, Chain Strike, the ultimate cheese card and the namesake of Chain Burn. You can only activate this thing as Chain Link 2 or higher. It is a quick play spell after all. And inflict 400 damage to your opponent for whatever chain link this is times the 400. So if this is chain link 2, it does 8. If it's chain link 10, it does 4,000 damage. I don't know how, you, that would be a crazy thing if that's what happened. <laughs> Long story short, it's a burn card in a mildly successful burn OTK. So there you go. It still sees play because it's burn. Anyway guys, that was the best cards in Cyber Dark Impact. Oh yeah, see I told you the set's not that bad. With Instant Fusion, Chain Strike, and uh, Vanity's Fiend, those are really good cards. Those are cards that still see play today. So, you know, that's better than like the last three, four, five sets with that had like almost no cards that people still use. So like, maybe we should all cut Cyber Dark Impact some slack. At least just for Instant Fusion. That card's great. <laughs> so guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I will see you guys next time for whatever the next set is. I actually haven't even looked that far ahead yet. I've been so focused on this one. Hmm. Oh, hey losers. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.